In this video, we will be discussing basic concepts about thermal chemistry. Thermal chemistry is a branch of chemistry which is concerned with heat changes that occur during chemical reactions. While thermodynamics is actually a branch of physics or it is the science of relationship between heat and other forms of energy. So for this lesson, we would be merging some physics concepts and apply them in chemical reactions. Okay, so just a basic recap. Let's have energy. So energy is a capacity for doing work and usually it is weightless, odorless, and tasteless. Okay, so energy is used for supplying heat and we have different types of energy as shown in our image. Okay, so if the energy is within the chemical substances, then we call that your chemical potential energy. Okay, so in chemistry, we also observe um, three broad concepts of energy. We have the kinetic energy, potential energy, as well as internal energy. Okay, so kinetic energy, as we have discussed in physics, it is um, associated with an object by its virtue in motion, or kinetic energy is known as your energy in motion. Potential energy is associated um, to an object by virtue of its possession in the field of force, or simply it is the energy at rest, while internal energy is simply the sum of the kinetic and potential energies of particles making up a substance. Okay, So the total energy of a system is the sum of its kinetic, potential, and also its internal energy. Okay. Now, we also observe the law of conservation of energy, which states that in any chemical or physical process, energy is neither created nor destroyed. Okay, so in chemistry, we could not create a new energy and also we could not destroy um, a previous energy. Okay, so all the energy is accounted for as work, stored energy, or in chemistry, we would be observing this as heat. Okay. Now, to analyze energy transformations, we need to use heat. Okay, so heat is usually represented by the small letter Q, and it is the energy that transfers from one object to another because of a temperature dif difference between them. So, in heat, only changes can be detected, and it usually flows from a warmer surface to a, cool, uh, to a cooler surface. Okay, so if you are familiar with the typical joke, na saying, isara yung pinto kasi lalabas yung aircon. So, there is actually um, physics or chemistry to that. Okay? So, is it proper to say that your aircon or the, coo the coolness brought by the aircon would come out? No, actually. Okay? Because heat actually flows from a warmer to a cooler surface. So, instead na lumalabas yung lamig, Ang nangyayari is isang room, pumapasok yung init. Okay? So, it's not wrong to, um, it's not proper to say, lalabas yung lamig. Rather, well, scientifically speaking, mas tamang sabihin na papasok yung init. Okay? So, um, heat could be observed as, um, it is, it could be absorbed or it could be released in a chemical reaction. Okay? In studying heat changes, you should remember these two parts. So we have the system and the surroundings. The system pertains to the part of the universe on which you focus your attention, and the surroundings would be everything else in the universe. Okay? So the system here in our picture, in our image, is actually the chemical reaction inside your flask or the chemicals. Then the surroundings would be the environment, while the universe would be everything. Okay, you have the system and the surroundings. So essentially, all chemical reactions and changes in physical state would involve two. It's either the release of heat or the absorption of heat. Okay, and these two are the endothermic and the exothermic processes. Okay, let's discuss these two types of processes. So an exothermic reaction is observed or an exothermic process is where heat is flowing out of a system into its surrounding. So it's exo, going out, okay? So it is defined as negative and its Q or heat has a negative 
value. Okay? So, in an exothermic process, the system loses heat or it gets cooler as the surrounding heats up. Okay? While the opposite of this is your endothermic process. Okay? So, the heat flowing into a system from its surroundings is called your endothermic process. Okay? So, it is defined as positive and its Q or heat is um, has a positive value. Okay? So, in an endothermic process, the system gains heat or it gets warmer as the surroundings actually cool down. Okay? So, every reaction has an energy change associated with it. Okay? So, if it's an exothermic reaction, the energy is actually released and it is in the form of heat. While for an endothermic reaction, um, energy is actually absorbed. Okay, now where do you see energy in your chemical reactions? They are actually stored in your bonds between your atoms. Okay. Now, how do we measure heat flow? So, we measure heat flow using the unit calorie. Okay. So, calorie is a quantity of heat needed to raise the temperature of 1 gram of pure water to 1 degree Celsius. Okay. So, it should, it should not be confused with the calorie being used in food. Okay, so that's a different concept. Okay, so your calorie is also related to joules, the um, SI unit of heat and energy. Okay, so your um, value for calorie or one calorie is equivalent to 4.184 joules. Okay. Now, you could also you, um, measure heat flow through its heat capacity and its specific heat capacity, okay? The heat capacity is the amount of heat needed to increase the temperature of an object exactly at 1 degree Celsius. So, it actually depends on the object's mass and its chemical composition. So, as you can see in our figure, I have two types of pot. So, you have um, an iron frying pan and an earthen pot. Okay? Yung earthen pot natin, example, ito yung mga palayok. Okay? So, usually, it, is, it would be easier to warm up your iron frying pan compared to an earthen pot. Okay? Because they have um, a different chemical composition, composition and also they have a difference in their masses. Now, the specific heat capacity is... Um, usually also called as your specific heat. Okay? So, if you see in other references, specific heat lang ang ginagamit. That's the same with your specific heat capacity. Okay? So, for this, we are going to use the symbol capital C and it refers now to the amount of heat it takes to raise the temperature of 1 gram of that substance by 1 degree Celsius. Okay? Uh-huh. So, to measure heat flow, we could actually use the formula Q is equal to M multiplied to delta T multiplied to C, where M is the mass in grams. Delta T would be the change in temperature in degrees Celsius, and C is your specific heat in joules per gram degrees Celsius or calories per degrees Celsius. I mean, per gram degrees Celsius. Okay? Now, um, we could also measure and express enthalpy changes using calorimetry. Okay, so calorimetry is actually the measurement of the heat into or out of a system for chemical and physical processes. Okay, so you could actually create your own calorimeter, the one being used to measure the change of heat. Okay, so um, this is used because we know that heat released would be also equivalent to the heat absorbed. Okay, so you could create your own calorimeter using styrofoam cups because they are excellent heat insulators. Okay, so for systems at constant pressure, the heat content is the same as a property called enthalpy of the system. Okay, so we'll discuss more of enthalpy later. Now, thermo thermochemistry happens in moles because you remember our chemical reactions or our um, stoichiometric problems. Now, we would add heat. Okay, so let's add a little physics to our chemistry. Okay, so an equation that includes energy is called a thermochemical equation. So, we have here um, an example. So, we have methane plus oxygen. So, this is um, a combustion 
reaction of your methane. Okay? So, you can see in your um, equation, you have the methane plus your oxygen, and now it released carbon dioxide in water, and now you see your energy. So, you have 802.2 kilojoules. Okay? So, in this reaction, one mole of methane releases 802.2 kilojoules of energy. And when you make 802.2 kilojoules of energy, you could also make 2 moles of water. Okay? So, excited the bahayo for more um, of these thermochemical equations. Okay, now let's proceed. So, let's have one type. We have the exothermic reaction. So, we have here um, the synthesis of carbon dioxide. So, you have carbon plus oxygen. Okay? So, the products are actually lower in energy than the reactants in this exothermic reaction. So, in this um, synthesis, energy is actually released. Okay? So, 395 kilojoules of energy is actually given off. Okay? So, the negative sign here does not mean that there is negative energy, but instead, it means that the energy is lost or released. Okay? So, we know that this is an ex exothermic reaction. So, if you're going to write this in an in, um, in a thermic chemical reaction, continuous siya. So, carbon plus oxygen would release carbon dioxide plus 395 kilojoules. Okay? So, once you see the energy at the reactant side, you know that it is an exothermic reaction. But if you see that, if you see the energy in the products, I mean in the reactant side, that is an endothermic reaction. Okay, so let's have one endothermic reaction. So you have here calcium carbonate plus 176 kilojoules. Okay, so you see energy now here is in the reactant side. So it would not produce your, carb um, your calcium oxide plus your carbon dioxide. So here in this reaction, the products are higher in energy than the reactants, thus the energy is absorbed, okay? So, um, the energy now here, the positive sign would mean that the energy is actually absorbed, okay? So, you have 176 kilojoules energy, okay? So, you see now the difference of the two um, reactions, okay? So, pag exothermic, the energy is found at the product side, while for the endothermic reaction, the energy should be located at the reactant side. Okay. Now, um, in thermochemical equations, we actually see the heat of reaction, and this is the heat change for the equation, exactly as written. So, in a thermochemical equation, the physical state of reactants and products must also be given, and the standard conditions for the reaction is 101.3 kilopascal or 1 atmos um, atmosphere, atmospheric pressure, and 25 degrees. Okay, so this is different from your STP, which are observed in your gas laws. Okay, so as you can see in our equation below, this is your photosynthesis. So say hello to bio, to your general bio. Yan. Okay, so halo-halo na yung subject natin. Meron tayong chem, meron physics, at meron ding, bi meron ding biology. Okay, anyway, let's proceed. So let's have one example. <clears throat> So, we have the same reaction a while ago. So, we have methane plus oxygen. It will release now your carbon dioxide, water, and then you have your energy. Okay? So, now let's apply some stoichiometry here. So, if 10.3 grams of methane are burned completely, how much heat will be produced? Okay? So, first we need to check if our reaction or our equation is already balanced. Okay, so we start with our known value. So we are given with 10.3 grams of methane. Okay, now we need to convert this to moles. So we're going to use now its molar mass, which is 16.05 grams per mole of methane. And then we are going to convert that to the desired unit. Okay, since we are looking for heat, we could use the ratio from the balance equation. Okay, so we need um, for every one mole of methane, um, it produced now 802.2 kilojoules of energy. Okay? So now, we can proceed with this reaction or with our um, equation. So, canceling out our units, we cancel out the grams methane, 
and then the moles of methane to arrive at 514 kilojoules, okay? So, at this, um, the heat produced is 514 kilojoules. So, we just indicate it as negative because it is released from the reaction, okay? I hope that is clear, okay? So, now let's proceed to enthalpy, okay? So, enthalpy is the heat content a substance has at a given temperature and pressure, okay? It cannot be measured directly because there is no set starting point, okay? So, at enthalpy, the reactants start with the heat content and the products also end up with the heat content, okay? So, what we could do is we should measure the enthalpy changes, okay? So, we use the symbol capital H for enthalpy. So, the change in enth enthalpy would be delta H, okay? So, if heat is released, then the heat content of the products is lower. So, our delta H would be negative. It means that there is an exothermic reaction. While if the heat is absorbed, the heat content of the products is higher and the, our delta H or the change in enthalpy is positive, okay? So, our change in enthalpy is also equivalent to the heat of reaction. So, as we recall, heat of reaction is the heat that is released or absorbed in a chemical reaction. So, these are the same um, examples that we had a while ago. So, this is the synthesis of carbon dioxide. So, you have carbon plus oxygen. It would now produce carbon dioxide plus 393.5 kilojoules, okay? So, here we indicate that there is a release of 393.5 kilojoules of energy, okay? So, again, um, it is important to note that in a thermochemical equation, it is important to indicate the physical state because um, it would affect now the heat of reaction, okay? So, for example, you have here the synthesis of water. So, if water is produced as a gaseous phase or as a gaseous state, so its um, enthalpy change is 241.8 kilojoules or negative 241.8 kilojoules, okay? But if the water produced is in the liquid state, so the heat of reaction or the change in enthalpy would be negative 285.8 kilojoules, okay? So it is very important to write the physical state. Okay, because there are possible, especially if your compound or if the products would have um, two possible states. Okay, so that would be the basic concepts that you need to remember in thermochemistry. So I hope by now you could identify endothermic and exothermic reactions already. Okay, so if you have further questions, you may... Comment them down below and just wait for my um, response. Okay, so I hope you learned something from this video. Bye!